Before we learn about logarithmic functions, of course, we need to know what logarithm means. For those of you, if logarithm is a completely new concept, you might find it a little bit difficult to understand. So let's first take a look at how usually a person starts to learn about arithmetic operations. My guess is everybody starts with addition, something like 2 plus 3 equals to 5. And then at a certain point, this person is probably offered a question that 2 plus some number equals to 5. And this person is asked to find out what this question mark is. And at this point, subtraction is introduced. And the question mark can be rewritten as 5 minus 2, which is 3. Problem solved. So similarly, at a certain point during your mathematic education, you learn about exponentiation. For example, 2 to the third power equals to 8. But what if you are asked the question, 2 to what power equals to 8? How do you find this question mark? How do you find this exponent? Similar to subtraction, you want to rewrite this question mark as a mathematic expression relating to an 8, and that will enable you to solve for the exponent and that is logarithm. So the question mark can be rewritten as log base 2 of 8. And since we know that 2 raised to the third power equals to 8, therefore log base 2 of 8 equals to 3. And if it won't cause confusion, you can simply read this as log 2 8 equals to 3. Once again, Logarithm is used to solve for exponent. So just like addition a plus b equals to c and subtraction c minus a equals to b are mathematically equivalent statements, exponentiation a to the b -th power equals to c and logarithm log base a of c equals to b, these two statements are also mathematically equivalent to each other. In both exponentiation and logarithm, a is known as the base. So now we can define the logarithmic function f with base a, read as fx equals to log base a of x. This base a here is just like the base in the exponential function, that it can be any positive real number, but it cannot be 1. There are two special logarithmic functions. The first one is common logarithm. When you see that the base is missing, the implied base is 10. Another one is natural logarithm. The base here, as you guessed it, is e, the natural base constant. And it is normally written as ln x. If you still remember how to find the inverse function for a given function, let's try to follow those procedures to find the inverse function for this exponential function fx equals to a to the power of x. The first step is to rewrite fx as y, so we have y equals to a to the power of x. Step 2, exchange x and y. So now y becomes the exponent. Step 3, solve for y as expression of x. And since y is the exponent, and we learned that, by definition, logarithm is used to find the exponent, therefore y equals to log base a of x. Step 4, rewrite y as f inverse x, and that is the inverse function for the exponential function. As you can see, logarithmic function is the inverse function for the exponential function with the same base, and vice versa. They are mutually inverse functions of each other. And since they are inverse functions of each other, they follow the inverse function property that the composite function f composed with f inverse, which equals to a to the log base a of x's power, and that equals to x. Similarly, the composite function f inverse composed with fx, which equals to log base a, of a to the power of x also equals to x. And that's 
some very important property involving exponential and logarithmic functions. Now let's look at the graph of this logarithmic function with base value a bigger than 1. When you sketch the graph of the logarithmic function, don't forget it is the inverse function of the exponential function with the same base a. And based on our knowledge of inverse functions, their graphs are mirror images about a 45 degree line. And also, the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function and vice versa. So for this function here, its graph is also always increasing. The domain is x must be bigger than 0. Remember, this used to be the range for the exponential function. Also, the range for this function is the function value can be any real number. Again, this used to be the domain for the exponential function. Just like the exponential function, the logarithmic function graph has no symmetry. It has an x-intercept now, which is 1, 0. Based on the same reason, a raised to the 0's power always equals to 1. Now it does not have y-intercept, but it does have a vertical asymptote, which is the y-axis. Now, for the graph of the logarithmic function with base value a between 0 and 1, if you compare its graph to the graph on the previous slide, the only difference is that this graph is continuously decreasing. Other than that, all the major properties are the same. They have the same domain, x must be bigger than 0. Same range, the function value can be any real number. There's no symmetry. They have the same x-intercept, 1, 0 no y-intercept, and also it has a vertical asymptote, which is the y-axis. Also, don't forget, just like the exponential function, logarithmic function is also a one-to-one -one function. Otherwise, it cannot have inverse function, if you remember. Since logarithmic function is also a one-to-one -one function, we can use, again, the one-to-one -one property to solve simple logarithmic equations.